I'm sure you clicked on this video and thought, oh, hey, cool, he's going to talk about the old fashioned. And then saw a bottle of Jägermeister and just about had a heart attack. Don't worry, I will justify its existence in this lineup. Hey there, hi there, ho there, and how are you doing? My name is Mike, and welcome to Mike's Hard Reviews, show I produce about cocktails, cocktail culture, and cocktail history. One of the bartenders at the Hilton Gardens Inn Hotel in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And today we're going to look at a classic cocktail that comes from the way before times, i.e. the 1800s, the Old Fashioned. So what's fun about the Old Fashioned is that that's kind of a canned name that comes from going back to the original. Around the turn of the 19th century, or uh, I suppose the 20th century, so 1900, people started to be able to improve the cocktails they made with whiskey, with things like citrus and simple syrups and flavorings of different kinds, and the name Old Fashioned comes from a desire to return back to basics with a lot of the recipes that people produced. As such, it is a distinctly spirit-forward, old, and prominent flavor pretty much any way that you make it. And I've decided we're gonna make four of them today and assess a couple different things about the drink and exactly what works and what doesn't and different things you can try to spice up your old-fashioned game, as it were. So we're gonna go through four different things. This is in no particular order necessarily, but we're gonna start by making a standard old-fashioned, just some good old-fashioned bourbon. I'm gonna use 100 proof uh, Evan Williams bottled and bond today. This is a pretty good budget whiskey you can get for about $18-ish in Michigan. As far as, you know, standard bourbons go, if I'm not gonna get something nice and small batch, this is what I would use. We're also going to take a step back and use an old school product. This is mellow corn. It's a corn whiskey. Technically speaking, uh, the birth of the old fashioned as a cocktail should theoretically use either bourbon or rye whiskey, as rye whiskey was a lot more prominently available at that time. But corn whiskey appears at around a similar time period, and I've actually never tried an old fashioned with corn whiskey, so. We're gonna give that a shot today and see how that changes the flavor palette. Additionally, uh, most old fashions are to be made with a slice of orange or an orange peel or an orange expression or some kind of orange element in them to add a little bit of bright citrusiness, particularly on the nose and at the front of the mouth with the tasting. I don't have any fresh citrus. I'm really bad at buying and using citrus, so most of it spoils. Instead though, I'm going to try and bust out one of my favorite flavored whiskeys Jim Beam Orange. This is available pretty much everywhere nowadays, and I think it's a really relatively new product at least, but you can get it most places for a pretty fair price, and frankly, if you're gonna get a flavored whiskey, easily one of the best ones. Moving on to the thing that people are probably gonna say something about, Jägermeister. The Jägermeister is a botanical liqueur flavored predominantly with anisette, which is the flavor that produces uh, that black licorice note you get from, you know, black licorice. I particularly like it, and the difference between this and something like absinthe uh, or uh, Sambuca or uh, Guyano is that it is infused with other botanicals that give it a sort of gin-like mouthfeel and presence on the taste. So we are going to make a Jägermeister Old Fashioned. Trust me, Jägermeister won't be the prominent flavor in it. Well, at least one of the prominent ingredients, rather. There's no way to cover this stuff up. Without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at our old-fashioned lineup, starting with the original. When we talk about a traditional old-fashioned, what does that look like? Well, nowadays, it's going to predominantly use uh, a bourbon, and I'm going to go for a full-proof bourbon here, so 100 proof, 50% alcohol to give it a much more uh, predominant proof flavor and produce some key specific notes we're going to be pulling out when we make the cocktail. Uh, additionally, it's going to require Angostura bitters. This is kind of what makes an old-fashioned an old-fashioned. You can't really change this out for anything else other than maybe a combination of this and orange bitters, or maybe just orange bitters on its own, but I wouldn't go for that. Additionally, we have to go for something to sweeten it up. Traditionally speaking, this is from a time when, you know, regular cane sugar and sugar cubes is more or less about as available as syrups and a lot of people say that a real old-fashioned should be produced with, you know, a sugar cube. I disagree. It never manages to fully dissolve into the drink and then your last sip is ridiculously oversweetened and you have a bunch of grains of sugar in your mouth. Why would you ever want that? So we're gonna use simple syrup today and frankly, it does the exact same thing. There's really no reason why you couldn't use simple syrup in something like this. Now, because we don't have any orange garnishes, if you wanted to add some orange flavoring to it, I would go for no more than about half an ounce of a triple sec um, or maybe a Cointreau, maybe a dry Curacao, definitely not Grand Marnier. Half an ounce of an orange liqueur to introduce some orange flavors. I don't think it's all that necessary, and it definitely won't be in some of our later ones, but this will come back into play. If you do want some orange, this is the best way to go. The Kuiper's like $7 a bottle, so 
you're not breaking the bank going for an extra step. All that surmising out of the way, let's start making our cocktail. I'm gonna start by throwing a couple of dashes of Angostura bitters into the drink. You can go about two to three. Um, I find that two dashes, two and a half-ish dashes, is uh, about the place you wanna be. What this is gonna do is produce a kind of spicy, bassy, really rich flavor that backs up the spirit and gives it a more full-bodied flavor. Quick note, um, a lot of people, like for example, I think three people actually, uh, know for sure what is in Angostura bitters at any given time. Predominant nutmeg, <laughs> I'm finding. Nutmeg and uh, maybe some allspice uh, is really rich, warm, warming notes in it. I think that's what distinguishes it from things like Peychaud's bitters, which is more in a set uh, herbal style. I'm gonna do the simple syrup next. We're gonna do half an ounce of simple syrup. And that's just to get our sweetness in there. Half an ounce is about equivalent, I would I would suggest, to uh, a simple sugar cube. And this is a stirred cocktail, so the reason we're building it directly into the glass is because there's no fruit juices or anything to aerosolize, so why bother with shaking it? Two ounces of our bourbon goes in next. Get that in there. And that is actually it. That is, that is it. It is a three ingredient cocktail, super easy to make, super quick. All we have to do is give it a quick stir and then give it a taste. And there we go. A freshly stirred old fashioned. Beautiful, rich gold color, or rather rich orange, warm amber color. Oh, it tastes like an old classic. That is delicious. The thing about an old fashioned is that because it's only two ingredients, it's going to be largely dominated by what you put into it. If you use a cheap whiskey like Kessler's, it's gonna taste like Kessler's and Bitters. If you use something else other than Angostura, it's gonna taste like in this case, it would taste like Evan Williams and whatever, you know, bitters you use. But the combination of the two flavors, the bourbon or a rye and the Angostura, produces this nice kind of warming, herbal, yet lightly sweet cocktail that is very approachable. I would say even for somebody who is not super into spirit heavy drinks. And you could sweeten this up even more and throw some triple sec in there to give it that orange flavor or even just do an orange garnish into it and you would produce something that is approachable to someone who is becoming more used to the idea of drinking heavy proof cocktails. This is easily a classic and is basically untouchable. I need to be careful because I could very easily put that away and I have three more old fashions to make, so. Maybe not a good idea. So now we're gonna take a look at a slightly different interpretation of an old fashioned using an ingredient that isn't commonly talked about when you make an old fashioned corn whiskey. This is something we haven't really seen on the show before. This is uh, Mellow Corn, which is a 100% corn mash whiskey produced, I believe by, yeah, by Heaven Hill, which is a fantastic bottle and bond distillery uh, that produces things like, Ev uh, no, I think Evan Williams Bottle and Bond is done at Heaven Hill. I think Ridden House Fry Whiskey is done at Heaven Hill Distilleries. There's a couple other things, whenever it's bottled and bond, you can generally assume it's like Heaven Hill or like two or three other distilleries. Really good stuff. Notably, it tastes like corn. It's a corn whiskey, you're gonna get a lot of vegetal corn-like notes in it as opposed to a regular bourbon, which is usually wheat. Take that as you will, it might not be for everybody, but we're gonna try to make it old fashioned with it and see how it holds up. We have our cracked glass here, I'm gonna do Cracked glass? What am I talking about? We have some cracked ice in our glass here. We're gonna start off again with two dashes, two and a half roughly, of Angostura bitters. Next up, we're gonna do our half an ounce of simple syrup. Same proportions as before, just swapping out our type of whiskey. And lastly, two ounces of our mellow corn whiskey. What I'll notice about mellow corn is that it, it is actually a slightly lighter color than most other bourbons and favors a more yellow tinge than a uh, amber kind of golden tinge when in the bottle. It's just noticeably lighter. So I'm interested to see if that actually shows up once we get that Angostura in there, though I imagine it won't. Commence our stir. And with that done, we have a corn whiskey old fashioned. I've never had this before, uh, but I do like corn whiskey. And when I tried it when I made my drink, the donkey, it actually comes through really prominently amongst other flavors and adds a whole new dimension to something. So I'm thinking that's what's gonna happen here. Let's try it out and see. Huh. Interesting, hold on. Go back for a second sip. Interesting. That's interesting. So the difference that I'm getting here, for the most part, is really just a kind of less bassy flavor. Like that is to say there are less lower, deeper, or rather fewer, uh, lower, deeper uh, flavor notes um, like you'd normally find in a regular uh, wheat whiskey. 
the bourbon. It's really fascinating, actually. It's kind of carrying through more sweetness uh, from the sugar and helping pull away some of that spice from the Angostura bitters. The corn's there, that's for sure. The corn flavor is present, but it it's interesting. It's, it's just different, and it's different in a way that's kind of puzzling me a little bit. I don't really know how to describe that. Other than good, it's actually really, really good. I like this a lot. It kind of carries a, a kind of whole-bodied citrus tone to it by itself with no citrus being involved here, just the slightest bit. I think compared to a regular Old Fashioned, actually, this would benefit especially well from an orange expression across the top and a peel of orange in there because it would just be so bright and flavorful and sweet, but like refreshing sweet. Yeah, the way I see that's how I would describe this. This is like an old fashioned, but like twice as, excuse me, refreshing as like a regular one made with bourbon or especially a rye, a rye would taste completely different. This is just really, really good actually. And I'm very impressed with how this came out. That might be the one that I finish on the show today. <laughs> that might be the one I finish the show off with, huh? Moving on to our third version of an Old Fashioned, uh, we're going to look at something uh, that I think most people probably wouldn't consider when it comes to an Old Fashioned, um, probably because of the nature of the drink, but uh, a flavored whiskey. So this is easily one of my favorite, if not my definite favorite, long-lasting, nearly 100% is that your final answer, favorite flavored whiskey, and this is Jim Beam Orange. Now Jim Beam makes a really good standard bourbon whiskey that I actually use as the well in my bar at work, and it's really good stuff. This orange, however, is distinctly interesting because it carries strong notes of their standard bourbon whiskey while still having an Aperol-like candy sweetness to its orange flavor that doesn't add any bitterness, sweetens it up a little bit, but is still, like, sippable as a bourbon. It's really interesting. It's a very, very well-balanced flavored whiskey, I suppose. And we are gonna go ahead and try to make an old fashioned with it to see how that holds up. Starting off with last time, this is gonna be the same proportions as it always has been. This is gonna be two-ish dashes of Angostura bitters. I put basically a third one in there because I don't want the sweetness in this to overpower it too much because we're also still gonna add our simple syrup. As said, the simple syrup, half an ounce of that. I gotta go to the store and get some more of this. Next up, we're gonna add our two ounces of Jim Beam Orange. And as I say that, I'm starting to realize that the alcohol is kicking into my system. That's fun. We're gonna pour two ounces of this into our cups and get that into the glass. Now, what's really interesting, I think, about this product in particular being used in a little fashion is that they're normally garnished with an orange wedge or an orange peel and, you know, expressed around the rim of the glass or into the glass, something like that. What this does is introduce that orange flavor directly into the drink throughout. So there's no point where that orange essence can dissipate. It's gonna be there basically no matter what. So I'm interested to see how that changes the flavor profile alongside that Angostura bitters. Give this a quick stir like all the other ones. If you're wondering why I'm stirring these, it's for one to, you know, dilute that simple syrup into the alcohol, uh, but also to allow that ice to melt a little more, come into more contact with the spirit and dilute it a little bit so that it has Time to open up and loosen some of that heavy ethanol we're gonna get off of these foolproof products. So that is our orange whiskey old fashioned. I wanna give this a smell real quick. It smells like orange. Actually, very dominantly orange, um, which is surprising. I thought the Angostura would kind of power through. Let's see how it tastes. Huh. Wow, that was surprising. The Angostura is dead, it is absent, which is really surprising. I'm gonna go ahead and add two more dashes of Angostura in here. Eh, three for good measure. Because I think if it was present and working alongside that orange flavor, it'd be really good, but it's kind of absent at just two dashes. Let's try it now. Oh. Oh my God. That's super good. <laughs> So what's happening here is there's this naturally occurring orange flavor that's kind of candy sweet and light and, you know, kind of coats your mouth and it tastes like candy. It's really sweet. It tastes like candy and some whiskey. Um, like a whiskey candy almost. I think those are a thing somewhere. But what the Angostura is doing to that candy sweetness is giving it some spice. And what it immediately reminded me of was Christmas spice. Like cloves and nutmeg and cinnamon and allspice and 
just this really rich, so really interesting, really good flavor, like just in general. It's a really impressive concept. And that's so interesting. That kind of spiciness is like, it's throwing a little bit of bitterness in there too and playing off with some of those whiskey notes that are really prominent in this. And it's making it taste actually a lot less like orange candy, but more like orange peel. It's moderating it to a point where it tastes more natural. You need more Angostura bitters than a regular old fashioned to do that. But it's really, really good. I cannot express how impressed I am with how this came out. Oh my gosh. I knew this would make good old fashions. I didn't know it would be that interesting. Because you wouldn't think that you could get complexity in a cocktail or something like this. You just use it to make like a punch or something. But, but no, this is really good. Impressively so. Do I think you would want more than one of these though? Probably not. They're very, very sweet. Um, they're very notably not like an old fashioned. That's the thing here. As good as I think this is, it's, it's not super old fashioned. Like if you were to take an ounce of this and then an ounce of, you know, a, a 100 proof bourbon, like a David if Jim Beam makes one, in fact, would be great. Um, you know, it's just another shot of bourbon and then a shot of that with the Angostura and the Simple. I think it'd be more approachable and you could cut back that Angostura. As it stands, it doesn't really carry all of the same rich, interesting, complex, spicy notes of an old fashioned. This is a way more approachable product though. This, this cocktail in this form is way more introducible to other people, which I think is actually really important because the old fashioned is kind of hard to say, hey, this is a really good cocktail and it's sweet as far as whiskey cocktails go not sweet like most people think. So this is a good way to say, hey, this is like an actually sweet, really approachable, really interesting and fun and orangey, citrusy, spiced thing. It's just so good, you know, it's just good. And I might finish this one and the corn whiskey one. I like old fashions a lot. This is a dangerous episode. <laughs> Now that I've been firmly blown away by what I thought was going to be the least approachable or, you know, least interesting of these uh, versions of an old fashioned, we're gonna move on to a cocktail that I actually have a little bit of a story for. First, I need a glass though. I'm gonna bust out my, my favorite whiskey glass. This is a glass given to me as a gift for my 21st birthday. There's a quote on the front from Mark Twain on it that says, too much of anything is a bad thing, but too much whiskey is hardly enough. And, I frankly agree, and for the course of this episode, yes. So this cocktail came about because I went to this speakeasy, and this is a story I'll tell in a full-blown video where I talk about the whole experience, but I went to a speakeasy in Grand Rapids uh, when they had a Guyana Old Fashioned on the menu, and I thought, oh my gosh, that's so good. Bourbon and Angostura and, you know, some orange expression with anisette flavors. That's really, 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 really good. Theirs was a bit over-sweetened for my taste, but um, it was still a delicious cocktail, and to this day, it is one of the best examples of a, you know, uh, easily indulgeable black licorice flavored cocktail. So I wanted to make one myself, and I decided that the best way to go about that was to use Jägermeister. It has more complexity than things like Guyano, it has less proof than things like Absinthe, and is generally super available to most people. Plus, it has a lot of naturally occurring sugar in it, so there's no or at least less of a chance at that point, of there being a ridiculous amount of black licorice flavor in here, too much for anyone to enjoy. We're gonna start off by doing three dashes of Angostura bitters, slightly more than you would normally put into an old fashioned, for my taste anyway. We're gonna do half an ounce of simple syrup like before. You don't really, you don't, you do not want to go more than that in here. I will say that for sure. All these old fashions I've made so far, you can sweeten to taste. If you think your bourbon is very predominantly oaky and kind of bitter and you want to sweeten that up a bit, go for it. This, you don't want to do that. It's just not going to end well for you. It's going to be very, very sweet. I'm already trying to flavor away from some of the bitterness and really strong, bold, painful flavors that occasionally occur in Jägermeister, so we're going to hold off on it a little bit here. We're going to add our egg... Jägermeister. <laughs> we're going to add our... Ye why can't I say Jägermeister? We're gonna add our Jägermeister now, and we don't need much of this. This is a very, very strong flavor, mostly of black licorice and maybe, maybe some juniper, mint, botanicals. Only need about half an ounce of that. 
dump that in. Next, I mentioned that the Kuiper was gonna come into this episode at some point, and this is when that happens. Let's go ahead and dump that in here. You're gonna need about three quarters of an ounce of this, actually. You want a good amount of orange in here to help, firstly, sweeten up uh, what's in the glass, because that Jägermeister is pretty heavy, and it is going to you know, produce a lot of flavor. But you also want to be able to add a certain amount of orange essence to the drink without just completely losing it. Of course, you could do that with, you know, an expression of orange peel as well. Would I still suggest putting some in the drink? Absolutely. It'll help keep the sweetness up to a point where the Jaeger is still present, but isn't being overpowered by anything else in the drink and isn't so sweetened that the whole drink itself is just too much to approach. Lastly, we're going to go for two ounces of bourbon. As you can see here, as I have decanted it, uh, this is my Latitude 42 bourbon, and I'm very steadily running out of it. The reason why I picked this, though, is because as far as your choice of bourbon goes to this, you want something you like. It's something that has flavors that are bold and pronounced and distinctly bourbon, which is why I chose this bottle. We're gonna give that a stir, as you do. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the Jägermeister Old Fashioned. As you can tell, that Jägermeister has really changed the color of what we're looking at here. It's much darker, it's a much more brown tone with, you know, golden orange, you know, how do I even describe that color? It looks like you put Jäger in an Old Fashioned. That's how I'm gonna describe that color. Let's give it a quick taste. Yeah, that's just good. <laughs> it tastes like um, with the notes of an Old Fashioned, that's kind of very predominantly led by Jaeger. There's this kind of rounding out that happens because the bourbon and the Angostura and the sweetness we put in there from the triple sec of the syrup is creating uh, a kind of cohesive unit where the Jaeger is the predominant flavor as it would be in most cocktails, but it's backed up by bourbon spice and sweetness and orange and oak, and it's pretty subtle, but at the same time, you can notice it. It's not hiding from you as much as it is playing the background role in this case. Additionally, what's interesting actually is when you really think about the way Jaeger tastes, that Angostura is kind of coming out at the same time and adding to the spiciness of the Jaeger, which is really, really interesting, I think. I think Jaeger's kind of light on its really rich, you know, kind of warming flavors. It's very heavy on the anisette. So introducing some more Angostura into that kind of involves that flavor a little bit. And while you're still getting a lot of black licorice, on the front especially, it kind of warms it up a bit and it makes it more enjoyable. And then as that anisette pulls away, it evolves into the flavors of an old fashioned with some orange in there. It's really good. I think it's really, really good. Could you sub the triple sec for Aperol? Probably, actually. I think a little bit of bitterness in this drink to balance out the sweetness from the Jägermeister and the syrup and, you know, kind of interplay with some of the warm, bitter oakiness that a lot of bourbons have. Yeah, you could easily do that. I think that would actually be a really, really good idea, but I haven't tried it, so at your own discretion, this is my Jägermeister Old Fashioned. Do with that what you will. All right, everybody, so there you have it. Today we talked about the Old Fashioned briefly in its historical context and then tried to make it four different ways, including uh, some old school style stuff, some new fashion cocktail creations, and uh, something I've never tried before. If you enjoyed this video and this look at variations on the very classic style of cocktail, you should follow me because I like doing this kind of thing. A lot of my own personal cocktails are based off of information I've taken and recipes for very classic old school style cocktails like the old fashioned. You might enjoy looking at those when they come down the line. If you did enjoy the video a lot and bothered to give it a like, why not go ahead and subscribe? Put that bell. Let me know what you want to see in the comments below too. I'm open to pretty much any suggestion. I haven't looked at a cocktail specifically and its history in a bit. The last one I did was the Clover Club, and there wasn't a ton of history on it, so I've kind of stepped away from those. I want to get back into it though, which means that by all means you should please contact me if you are interested at all in the idea of me covering a certain kind of cocktail. You can do that in the comments below, or you can also go to my Twitter at MyCardReviews and follow me, where I occasionally repost or try to chat with other cocktail chemists or cocktail alchemists, as I refer to them, and uh, see whenever I post new stuff as well. I try to be active. I fail repeatedly, but I will continue to try. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video about old fashions. <laughs> a lot of old fashioned. I will say, a little more toasty than I was a couple hours ago. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, 
Like I said, like, subscribe, click the bell, follow me on Twitter, and hopefully I will see you guys in the next episode. Until that comes around, stay tipsy.